This is your weekly review. Today we're going to break down the latest news, rumors, and updates for G.I. Joe all-in-one fast-paced video. We have a lot of brand new updates, including exclusive details about the secret discussions related to upcoming G.I. Joe plans. We'll tell you which vehicles have been considered for this year's G.I. Joe Classified HasLab and more. So keep watching until the end. First up, during a recent interview with Dan Who Reviews, Lenny and Emily from the G.I. Joe team gave a bit of G.I. Joe classified insight. Lenny said that in 2024, there will be some expansions to their lines. By this, he's referring to what we've recently reported. Expansions to the Tiger Force line, expansions to the Night Force line, and expansions to the Retro line. Emily said that in 2024 and 25, they will be continuing to push these lines and add more to them, while putting a new spin on callbacks to the past. In other words, more vintage-inspired figures with some modern updates along the way. And that's really the sweet spot for G.I. Joe Classified at this moment in time. Emily and Lenny both confirmed this to be the case, saying that they feel they're making a lot of good choices with the brand. Lenny added that they're trying to build out the narrative of G.I. Joe and Cobra battling it out and creating a world of play. Emily confirmed that yes, there will be more vehicles coming along in 2024 than just the Vamp. This confirms what we've been reporting over the last six months, with new additions like the Cobra Stinger and Tiger Paw set to join the line this year, and others to join the line by 2025 like the Dreadnought Ground Assault, G.I. Joe MMS, and Dreadnought Thunder Machine. Lenny said that they want to make products that come to life, and in order to build a world, they need vehicles and big weapons, and they need things that are sci-fi based. Lenny said that without any form of media to support the line, they're relying on the classified products to tell the story. Let us know in the comments below if you feel that Hasbro is doing enough storytelling with just the figures and vehicles alone, or if you want to see more narrative building through stories like the Night Force and Dark Energon narrative that we recently spotlighted with our own diorama images. Lenny added that they're hoping collectors like the classified line enough to create their own stories. Emily said that she thinks not having a form of media to support the line and provide storytelling works to their advantage as not everyone necessarily knows who all the characters are. Lenny said that the G.I. Joe team has spoken about making playsets, but it'll be necessary to take a different approach to them based on size. He added that something like a watchtower is likely too tall for collectors to make room for in their display shelves or display cases. He emphasized that they would have to consider the utility of a playset versus the logistics of how it would work. In other words, if there's more of a use or a demand for a specific playset, and it has a special connection to the rest of the line, then that might matter more to their decision making than something like how tall or big it is. From what Lenny said, one of the considerations they have in mind when it comes to playsets and vehicles is determining what adds more value to the line, making one playset or making five figures instead. He added that in future years, after the lines have been built out with more figures, it might make more sense at that time to create more vehicles and playsets as opposed to making more figures. He said they're essentially trying to figure out what collectors need at any given time. Emily said that they're always trying to stay aware of how big the line has grown and that they want to avoid making a lot of high-priced items each year so that collectors can collect as many items as possible without going bankrupt. Emily and Lenny said that most of the name-only reveals that we have right now will be released in 2024. However, some of the last ones they mentioned might end up being released in early 2025. For reference, the last name-only reveals were Leatherneck, Xandar, Starduster, and Nemesis Immortal. The figures that Emily was referencing seem to be Leatherneck and Xandar, which we don't yet have dates for in our 2024 notes just yet. So a January 2025 release for the wave with Leatherneck and Xandar makes a lot of sense. Also, let's make a note that Shadow Tracker was first announced in October 2022, but he wasn't actually released until January 2024, more than a year later. We were one of the lucky ones who received our Shadow Tracker, Night Force Tunnel Rat, and Night Force Wolf Spider in December 2023, but these are all 2024 figures. Shadow Tracker is proof that not all name-only reveals are released within the next 12 months. Emily mentioned that there will be a total of 9 retro card figures released in 2024 which will be released in waves of three figures each. The first wave is Cobra Eel, Snow Serpent, and Beachhead. Stay tuned, we'll tell you the next retro card wave later in this episode. Lenny said they're aware of the ongoing issue with weapons being too gummy, soft, and flexible and that this problem is driving him crazy. He said that when they're examining samples, they constantly make comments to the factory that things are too soft and bendy, and that this needs to get fixed. 
He said it's been a battle to get certain weapons made with stiffer plastics, because there are some edges that could turn into sharp points if they were made with harder plastic. Emily said that based on the age rating for the G.I. Joe Classified series, which is made for ages 4 and up, there are certain safety standards they have to meet. Lenny said that they're actively fixing this issue and that the problem should be 95% resolved by 2025, although some weapons will still be made with softer plastic in order to meet the safety standards. He said we'll still find that the issue hangs around for the 2024 figures, but that the problem will dwindle away as the year goes on. What are your thoughts from the insight shared by Lenny and Emily? And how do you feel about possibly having to wait longer for more vehicles or playsets? As always, share your thoughts with us in the comments. You never know who might be reading your comments and feedback. And before we move on, we invite you to quickly do us a favor and smash that like button to show your support for the show and the work that we put into it. Next. Recently, Hasbro conducted some focus group discussions concerning G.I. Joe. Participants were shown digital renders of possible future vehicles for a HasLab project. They were also provided pricing options for each vehicle as well as possible tiers for each. There were three renders shown for each vehicle, a vintage design, a modernized design, and a modern-day realistic design. There were four vehicles shown in total, two for the Joes and two for Cobra. All vehicles were either for the land or air. There was only one air vehicle, the other three were land vehicles. As we've reported previously, Hasbro is not giving much consideration at this time to sea vehicles, as they feel that land and air vehicles are easier to engineer and more aesthetically pleasing to display. Additionally, air vehicles are the cheapest to make. We can share with you the four vehicles which were discussed. First, the Cobra Rattler, which was the only air vehicle under consideration. Next, the G.I. Joe Mauler. Next, the G.I. Joe Snowcat. This is one of the most popular vehicles out there not yet made for classified. And finally, the Dreadnought Thunder Machine. And this seems like a very obvious one just due to its popularity. Of these four options, the cheapest was reportedly the Dreadnought Thunder Machine, which if the information is true, means this was reportedly under $200. This would line up with what we've reported in the past, as the Dreadnought Thunder Machine is small enough to be a retail option like the Vamp. Including some extra figures as tiers obviously results in a higher overall price point. These four vehicles are the only known options being considered for the 2024 HasLab. Once again, as we've been saying for a while now, we believe this year's HasLab will end up being the Cobra Rattler. Read into that however you want. As always, Hasbro can pivot to another option at any time and for any reason. The decision is ultimately up to them. First and foremost, Hasbro's top priority for any HasLab project is that it fully funds successfully. Beyond that, they want it to be as profitable as possible, and for collectors to be happy with it so that there's more excitement down the road for future projects. All four vehicle options would be popular, regardless of whether they're HasLabs or not. Of these four, the Rattler would be the biggest in size just due to its length. That said, it would be similar in length to the Dragonfly. We can all have our own opinions, but the Rattler has consistently been the most popular G.I. Joe vehicle with collectors according to our own polls and research over the last three years. At this point, it would be a big surprise if Hasbro decided to choose any other vehicle over the Rattler this year. But let's turn this over to you. If you had an opportunity to sound off about these four vehicles, what would you tell Hasbro? And what would you tell them that you want the tier options to be? Let us know in the comments down below. On a related note, in a recent episode of the Fans First Talk Show, we shared some of our predictions and spoilers for the G.I. Joe Classified line in 2024 and 25. We discussed some options for the Cobra Rattler's tiers for a possible HasLab project. Here's what we had. The Cobra Rattler would obviously include Wild Weasel as its pilot, and we would expect that this includes a flight stand as well. For the tiers, we believe that three strong options are the Flight Suit Baroness in her blue suit, a Cobra Air Trooper, and a Cobra Para Viper. Let us know if these options make sense to you, or if there might be another tier option that you'd prefer instead. We want to hear from you! Next! Stay tuned for a new Hasbro Live event on Thursday, February 1st, 2024. Here's what we are expecting. The official 60th anniversary kickoff. The introduction of Super 7's O-Ring line. New classified pre-orders including the His Fire Team 788 Techno Viper and SMS. Alpine, Iron Grenadier, Iron Grenadier Bat, and knowing Hasbro, they also have a few surprises up their sleeves. And we're also expecting some new classified digital renders, including Doc, Jinx, Dreadnought Torch, and Night Creeper. Let's quickly move over over to Alpine. Alpine is going to be one of the first G.I. Joe classified reveals of 2024. As we just said, he's going to be in a wave with the Iron Grenadier and Iron Grenadier Bats, which we told you about back in mid-September. 
Since then, anticipation has been growing quickly, and this wave should be very well received. As far as accessories go, there might be quite a bit of reuse for Alpine from other characters in the classified series. Options include Range Viper's Pickaxe, Grunt Sunbow Laser Blaster, Alley Viper's GRB-88 Grapple Hook Rifle, Tomax and Zamot's SMG, Arctic Mission Storm Shadow's Grapple Hook and Rope, and Shipwreck's Rope Bundle. If you're looking forward to Alpine joining Classified first thing in 2024, blast that like button. Next, as a reminder, here's a list of the current upcoming figures for the G.I. Joe Classified series which have been announced by Hasbro. Alpine, Iron Grenadier, Iron Grenadier Bat, which is unannounced but confirmed, Doc, Jinx, Night Creeper, Dreadnought Torch, Naga Hide and his Boar, Deluxe Raptor, Leatherneck, Xandar, Deluxe Starduster, Deluxe Nemesis Immortal, Retro Beachhead, Retro Snow Serpent, Retro Eel, and the Cobra Ferret and Ferret Scout. Next, let's jump over to the Retro line. According to Hasbro, there will be 9 Retro card figures released in 2024, and there are more planned for 2025. The first wave of 2024 Retro figures is Snow Serpent, Cobra Eel, and Beachhead. The second wave of retro card figures begins with Cobra Commander, and we believe the next two figures will be Roadblock and Stalker. A retro major blood was previously included in Hasbro's plans, but then pushed to the future instead. As we recently told you, we believe retro major blood will appear as part of the 2024 roster. Based on insight from the Hasbro team, it makes sense for Major Blood to be part of the third and final 2024 Retro Wave. If so, this lines up with what we've been telling you lately. When we know more, we'll let you know. And as always, we want your takes down in the comment section. Today's Viper Island question of the day is, what are you most excited for in 2024 and 25? Let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll pin the best comment. My name is Liam. You can follow me on Instagram at Viper Island. For all things G.I. Joe, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you want to support the show, smash that like button. Until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, have a great day, and yo Joe!